Leader of the Opposition. Conservatives, common sense conservatives, will cut taxes, build housing, fix the budget, stop the crime. Yet, this Prime Minister is not worth the cost, the interest cost, after eight years. The government will spend more on interest on our national debt than on health care. More money for bankers, less for nurses. When will the Prime Minister accept my common sense plan to fix the budget with a dollar for dollar law to reduce interest costs for Canadians? The Honourable Minister of Housing, Infrastructure and Communities. Mr. Speaker, common sense or nonsense? He wants to cut the programs that support the middle class. He wants to cut programs to build housing. He wants to cut programs that protect our environment. That is not common sense. It is incompetence. The Honourable Leader of the Opposition. Incompetence from the minister who lost a million Canadians, who was the worst minister of immigration in our history. His own prime minister admitted that he led the out-of-control immigration system. That's why, according to them, the cost of housing has doubled. Now he is pushing the prices further. Inflationary deficits are adding 2% to interest rates. $6,000 for a family with a $300,000 mortgage. Will the government reduce the deficit and interest rates so Canadians can keep their money and their houses? The Honourable Minister of Innovation. Mr. Speaker, six is the number that Canadians at home need to remember. What we've just heard, the leader of the Conservatives, he wants to advise Canadians, but he was able to just build six units of affordable housing when he was minister. Mr. Speaker, I'll repeat, we will take no lessons from the Conservatives. On this side, Mr. Speaker, we have a plan to build houses, create jobs, create prosperity. Canadians know that slogans don't build houses, they don't build prosperity, and they won't help Canadians. Every day is a good day to fight for Canadians. The Honourable Leader of the Opposition. Common sense Conservatives will axe the tax, build the homes, fix the budget, and stop the crime. This Prime Minister is not worth the cost of interest. According to Scotiabank, the Prime Minister's deficits are adding a two full percentage points extra in interest costs for the average family. That works out to about $6,000 for a modest mortgage of three hundred grand. Six grand in extra mortgage payments from these deficits alone. Will they finally wake up to the fact that this NDP Liberal Prime Minister is not worth the cost? The Honourable Minister for Housing, Infrastructure and Communities. Mr. Speaker, the Leader of the Opposition seems to know the cost of everything but the value of absolutely nothing. Does he not see value in the measures that are building more homes in this country? Does he not see value in programs that are going to put food on the table for hungry kids through a school food program? He continues to oppose measures that are helping students with the cost of their education and the families with the cost of housing. Mr. Speaker, we will continue to put measures on the table to make life more affordable for middle class Canadians and do right by a generation of young people who have been priced out of the housing market. It's a shame his policy would have the exact opposite effect. Here, here. The Honourable Leader of the Opposition. Mr. Speaker, we can't see the value of homes and food that don't exist here, here. after eight years. There's, they have a food program which, which, after eight years, has no food, a affordable housing program which has doubled housing costs. They're not worth the cost, and now their deficits are driving up the interest obligations for the average family. For a family with a $500,000 mortgage, deficits are adding 10 grand in additional interest payments per year. When will they realize that after eight years, this NDP Liberal Prime Minister is not worth the cost? The Honourable Minister for Housing, Infrastructure and Communities. Mr. Speaker, he wants to talk about homes that don't exist. Perhaps we could, should look at the 800,000 affordable housing units that were lost while he was housing minister. Shame. Perhaps we should examine the fact that while he was minister, zero new apartments were supported by the federal government and a total of only six affordable housing units nationwide. Now, he likes to talk a big game, but let's look at the plan he's putting on the table. He wants to raise taxes on home construction and cut funding for the cities that are making it easier to build a home. We've advanced programs 
that are not just going to build more homes, but allow people to save up more money with their down payment and reduce their monthly mortgage costs when they go to join the housing market for the first time. Excuse me, excuse me. Excuse me. I understand that there was a problem with interpretation. To see, is the interpretation now working from English to French? Do we have it, English to French? Do we have it working now? Can anybody give me a signal? Okay. Alors, je vais inviter le... So I will invite the minister to restart his answer. Oscars. Because it wasn't understood by a number of members. Um, the Honourable Minister for Housing, Infrastructure and Communities. Uh, Mr. Speaker, the Honourable Member wants to talk about homes that don't exist. Let's talk about the 800,000 affordable housing units that were lost when he was last in government. Let's talk about the fact that when he was actually Housing Minister, he got zero apartments built with the support of the federal Shame. government. Let's look at the fact that across the entire country, he was able to get a total of only six affordable housing six. units built. Mr. Speaker, he talks a big game, but he does literally nothing for the people who need to get into the housing market. We've got new measures that help people who are renting now and measures that will make it easier to save up for a down payment and to reduce your monthly mortgage costs if you want to own a home in this country. The Honourable Leader of the Opposition. More proof this NDP Liberal Prime Minister is not worth the cost is that he picked the most incompetent immigration minister in Canadian history and put him in charge of housing. The guy who lost track of a million people who's blamed by his fellow cabinet colleagues for causing the housing crisis and who presides over the most expensive housing market in Canadian history. When I was minister, the average rent was $950, and we built hundreds of thousands of units at that affordable price. So why won't he learn from our smashing success in 2015 in keeping costs low by axing the tax and building the home? The Honourable Minister for Housing, Infrastructure and Communities. Mr. Speaker, now at the time they expressed opposition to our plan to welcome 40,000 Afghan refugees who fought alongside the Canadian Armed Forces. They seem still to have problems with the fact that we opened our doors to vulnerable Ukrainians. But let's actually focus on the housing issue right now, Mr. Speaker. He talks a big game about housing, but he plans to raise tax... They have this entire question. Order. The Honourable Order. I'm going to ask all members on all sides of the House to please, I'll ask the Honourable Member from Milton. has 15 seconds left on the clock. Mr. Speaker, they get antsy when they're confronted with their actual record. Let's take a look at what he got done. Only six affordable housing units across the entire country. Lost 800,000 more. Zero new apartments. Now he wants to raise taxes on home building and cut funding for the communities who are getting them built. Then I have the, the Honourable Member for La Prairie. Urgent message to those who still think we shouldn't care about jurisdiction and let the federal government decide everything. CMHC proves that when the federal government meddles in housing and exclusive jurisdiction of Quebec, Quebecers receive only 14% of the money, even though we are 22% of the population. It's worse when the federal government chooses the projects itself, as in affordable housing, where we receive only 6%, even though we are 22% of the population. When the federal government gets involved, Quebecers don't get their share, starting with the less well-off. Who would accept being ripped off like that? The Honourable Minister of Transport. Mr. Speaker, 
each has their own priorities. We talk about investing in housing. They want a referendum. We are investing in our youth and our seniors. The blocks say they need a referendum. We want our youth to have full tummies at school, but no, they say the solution to everything is a referendum. As they prepare their referendum, we are preparing the future. The Honourable Member for La Prairie. That's anything at all. When the federal government meddles in Quebec's jurisdictions, Quebecers get shortchanged. Housing is a perfect example. We re represent 22 percent of the population, but we get 14 percent of the money and only 6 percent in affordable housing. In addition to never having given us our fair share, tomorrow's budget will add insult to injury. They're going to impose new conditions on the extra $6 billion of our money they're promising for housing. Why not just unconditionally transfer Quebecers' fair share of the housing money. Can he answer that question? The Honourable Minister of Housing, Infrastructure and Communities. Mr. Speaker, we are working with Quebec to ensure that Quebec will receive its fair share of the funding for housing. For example, with the program to accelerate the building of housing in Quebec, we have an agreement with $900 million of federal money and $900 million from Quebec. The result is $1.8 billion and 8,000 affordable housing units. We are continue to advance programs to ensure support is received throughout, in Quebec and throughout the country. The Honourable Member from Burnaby South. People are getting gouged at the grocery stores and CEOs are making record profits, all because the Prime Minister kept the Conservatives' $60 billion corporate handout and Canadians are paying the price. Loblaws made $1.2 billion because of this corporate Conservative handout. So will the Prime Minister... Ask uh, honourable members, especially the honourable member from... Uh, Grand River, Miramichi, uh, Grand River, to please uh, only take the floor when he's recognized by the Speaker. If the Honourable Member from Burnaby South can start from the top, please. Mr. Speaker, you can tell Conservatives get really touchy when we talk about corporate Conservative handouts. Yeah. People are getting gouged at the grocery store and CEOs are making record profits. And the Conservatives are again are making noise because they're upset because they want to give more corporate handouts to companies like Loblaws that are gouging Canadians and ripping off people because they want that to happen. That's who they work for. Their chief strategist is a Conservative lobbyist for the biggest corporation that sells groceries. Now, will the Prime Minister reverse these Conservative corporate handouts, yes or no? Hear, 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 hear. The Honourable Minister of Innovation. Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker. I'd like to thank the, uh, the leader of the NDP for bringing a very important question on this floor, Mr. Speaker. But it seems that he's been missing a part, Mr. Speaker. He was with us in order to make the largest reform on competition in this country, Mr. Speaker. In fact, thanks to this work and the help of the NDP and our government, Mr. Speaker, we made the largest reform on competition in our nation history. But one thing, if he wants to help consumer, Mr. Speaker, why don't he work with us to make sure that we would have a grocery code of conduct across the nation, Mr. Speaker, to help consumers, to help families, to help young kids, Mr. Speaker. They can do something. We're waiting for it. Let us have the Honourable Member for Burnaby South. To take on the corporate greed, which is driving the pi tr price of groceries up. Galen Weston se regale encore. Galen Weston is still pleased with the last time the Conservatives were in power. Thanks to them, Loblaws paid $1.2 billion dollars less in taxes. This week, the Prime Minister has the opportunity to put in place a tax on excess profits for grocery giants. Will he do it? Yes or no? Bravo. The Honourable Minister of Innovation. Mr. Speaker, I'd like to thank the leader of the NDP for having supported us when we launched the biggest reform on competition in the country because Canadians who are watching from home know that the best way to stabilize prices in the country is to have more competition in the country. That is exactly what we've done. And now I encourage him, if he wants to help Canadians, if he wants to help families and youth, why not support us to have 
a grocery code of conduct throughout the country. On this side of the House, we will continue working for young families, for Canadians, for consumers throughout the country. The Honourable Member from uh, Calgary, Forest Lawn. While the Finance Minister is out buying new budget shoes today, she should drop by a Toronto Food Bank where one in ten Torontonians are having to use their services after eight years of her government. Tomorrow's expensive photo op budget will only confirm why interest rates are staying higher for longer and why Canadians can't aff afford to eat, heat and house themselves. After eight years of this Liberal NDP government, they are not worth the cost of housing. Will this Liberal NDP government listen to Conservatives, cap spending, bring in a dollar for dollar law to bring down inflation and interest rates so Canadians don't lose their homes. The Honourable Minister. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Maybe the Honourable Member opposite needs to take a look at what is announced earlier this month and the month before, which is that inflation in Canada is below 3% for the second month in a row. Mr. Speaker, triple A debt rating for this country, one of the very few countries in the world to have that. Mr. Speaker, lowest debt to GDP ratio. Now, while that party is all doom and gloom. We are here working every day for Canadians on a school food program, on, ca on a Canada child benefit, on making sure that we have $10 child care across the country. Mr. Speaker, we're working for Canadians each and every day. The Honourable Member from Calgary Forest Lawn. With answers like that, he'll make a great high-priced Liberal consultant after the next election who's not worth the cost. What does he understand? When two million Canadians are going to a food bank in a single month, a million more projected to this year, where young people can't see the dream of home ownership, where uh, rents and mortgages have doubled after failed policy of the Liberal NDP government. Why doesn't he get with the program and, and before he gets kicked out of his position and listen to Canadians, why don't they implement a dollar-for-dollar -dollar law, cap the spending, so Canadians don't lose their homes. The Honourable Minister for Employment and Workforce Development. Mr. Speaker, that party and that member not only have no plan for housing, the meagre plan that they have actually wants to make it more expensive to build houses in this country, and they're against every single measure that we've done to actually make home ownership affordable for Canadians. Again, Mr. Speaker, that Alberta MP voted against Air Products, $1.6 billion net hydrogen plant in our province, voted against the first carbon capture use and storage net zero cement plant in our province. Mr. Speaker, Speaker, they're voting against Alberta jobs. They're voting against Canadians. We're here for Albertans and Canadians each and every day. The Honourable Member from Peterborough, Kawartha. After eight years, this NDP Liberal government Prime Minister is not worth the cost. Emily Wheaton is a single mom who lost her home because she didn't qualify for her mortgage renewal. Why? Because of this Liberal NDP inflationary spending, which has driven up interest rates. So now she's forced to rent. She's paying nearly $4,000 for a 600-square-foot apartment. Tomorrow's budget, we're asking for the Prime Minister to show compassion and sanity. Have a dollar of spending for every new dollar spent so Canadians can afford to keep their homes. Yeah. The Honourable President of the Treasury Board. Mr. Speaker, what you will see in tomorrow's budget is support for renters and homeowners alike, and we'll do that all the while being fiscally prudent with the lowest debt-to-GDP ratio in the G7 with a triple-A credit rating from an independent, objective observer, Mr. Speaker, as well as traditionally low unemployment. We do that at the same time as working for the most vulnerable in this country, something that the Conservatives vote against every single time. We expect all members of this House to support Canadians across the board. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. The Honourable Member from Peterborough, Kawartha. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. What, what Canadians don't believe is anything they say. Right. They've had eight years to prove a record, and more homes were built in the 1970s than have been built today. Ten cities across this country are normal. Don't tell people they've never had it so good when we have record high usage of food banks, when we have young people who will never own a home, and when interest rates have went up 2 percent, causing $10,000 a year in interest payments alone. Shame. Let's do a dollar for dollar, let's show some sanity, and let's allow Canadians to keep their homes. The Honourable Minister for Families and Children. I think what Canadians need to know is what the Conservative response is to the affordability challenges that Canadians are facing. 
it's cuts. It's cuts to the programs that they need and are supporting them in a time of need, abandoning them when they most need it. On this side of the house, we've put forward a national school food program. We've put forward $10 a day child care, the Canada Child Benefit, supports that are helping Canadians put food on the table and support their families, in contrast to everything that they oppose. The Honourable Member for Megan Seclerable. For three weeks now, the Liberal Prime Minister and his ministers have been displaying all the failures of this government after eight years. Inflation, interest rates, rents, mortgage payments, everything's going up. And it's going to continue with the Liberals. Tomorrow is the budget day. Will the Prime Minister, who isn't worth the cost, at least accept our demands to cut taxes for farmers and food? build housing, not bureaucracy, and apply dollar-for-dollar dollar discipline, and especially put an end to the parade of inflationary spending so Canadians can feed themselves and house themselves. The Honourable Minister for Public Services and Procurement. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. One, two, three, four, five, six affordable housing units. That's what the leader of the Conservatives built when he was housing minister. That's in contrast with the 8,000 affordable housing units that we are building now in partnership with the government of Quebec and municipalities. In Megane the project will be building 24 affordable housing units just there, four times more than were built by the Conservative leader, the chief insulter. The Honourable Member for Megane It's not 24, it's 48, Mr. Speaker, and it's worse CMHC is slow in approving that project. Mr. Speaker, I'm so surprised to hear that minister give results, showing off results that there's tens of thousands of affordable housing units he wants to build to correct a crisis his government created. That's the reality, Mr. Speaker. Tomorrow, will they understand common sense, build housing, not bureaucracy, so that Canadians can house themselves and get out of the crisis that they built? The Honourable Minister of Public Services and Procurement. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I'm very pleased to see that my colleague knows that we're doing much more than the Conservative leader, the Chief Insulter, did during his time as Minister of Housing. There's another project in his writing in addition to the one he mentioned called En Valtois, 13 affordable housing units for people who need them, people who otherwise would be on the street. 13 is two times six, double what was built by the Conservative leader, the chief insulter, during his whole term for the whole country. The Honourable Member for Salaberry sur French Prime Minister Gabriel Attal addressed the National Assembly on Thursday, and as a worthy representative of the country of the Enlightenment, he delivered an inspired plea for state secularism, which is equally valued by the French and Quebecois. France, like Quebec, prohibits the wearing of religious symbols by government employees in positions of authority. France goes even further than Quebec's Bill 21, which this Prime Minister wants to challenge before the Supreme Court, claiming that it is discriminatory. Has the Prime Minister told France that he finds it discriminatory? Or is he reserving his contempt his for Quebecers? The Honourable Minister of Transport. Mr. Speaker, Canada is a secular country and Quebec is a secular province. Nobody is calling that into question, but the Black Québécois is looking for a way to create disputes, to oppose people, to say that because we're proud Quebecers, we should separate because we're different from others. No, we can be proud Quebecers, proud Canadians at the same time, and we don't have to choose between the two. They're just talking about referendums. And while they do that, we're talking about building a more just, more open, more inclusive society, a strong Quebec in a united Canada. The Honourable Member for Salaberry sur I'll quote Prime Minister Attal. Faced with those who claim not to understand what secularism is, who would like to twist it, who would have us believe that it is some kind of anti-religion weapon, who would have us believe that it is a form of discrimination. We respond that secularism is the prerequisite for freedom, for equality, for fraternity. Mr. Speaker, our Liberal, Conservative and NDP colleagues are among those 
who pretend not to understand? Can they at least avoid challenging at the Supreme Court what they misunderstand? The Honorable Minister of Justice and Attorney General of Canada. I appreciate the question, and my answer is the same one that I've already given here in the House. It's the same answer of the Prime Minister. It's that with Bill 21, if it goes to the Supreme Court, we will be there as the Government of Canada to defend the Charter of Rights and Freedoms. Freedom of expression, freedom of equality, equality between the sexes. These are important issues. It's important to defend the Charter. The, the Honourable Member for Salaberry Surwa. Prime Minister Attal told Quebecers that in their defense of secularism, they are not alone. France has banned religious symbols for people in positions of authority since 1905. So have Belgium, Norway, Denmark, and several German provinces. In fact, I'll quote the European Court of Justice. In order to establish a totally neutral environment, a public authority may prohibit the visible wearing of any sign revealing religious beliefs. Mr. Speaker, is the European Union discriminatory too, or is it just Quebecers? The Honourable Minister of Justice and the Attorney General of Canada. With the context of Bill 21, as I've said, and I'll repeat, when the decision is made by the Supreme Court, if it gets to that level, we will be there, as we've said. The Government of Canada will always be there to protect Canadians in their rights in the Canadian Charter. The Charter protects equality, expression, and equality of the sexes. We will be there if it gets to the Supreme Court. Thank you. The Honourable Member from Northumberland, Peterborough South. Mr. Speaker, after eight years, this NDP Liberal Prime Minister is not worth the cost. Farmers have reached a breaking point. The carbon tax has driven costs sky high. They are drowning in a sea of red tape, and worst of all, they are constantly derided and demonized by this Liberal government. Will this Prime Minister finally give farmers a break and axe the tax to make food cheaper for everyone by passing Bill C-234 in its original form? The Honourable Minister for Agriculture and Agri-Food. Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker. And being a farmer, I'm fully aware that farmers are on the front line of climate change. They see the devastation effect, uh, impact of climate change in this country and the destruction of, of, uh, of burns, killing cattle. But also, we have a price on pollution, Mr. Speaker. And along with the price on pollution, we have a, we have a Canada carbon rebate which puts more money back in the pockets of Canadians. Mr. Speaker, why does the Conservative Party of Canada want to take that money away from Canadians? Okay. The Honourable Member from Northumberland, Peterborough South. Mr. Speaker, it was clear from the PBO that 6 out of 10 Canadian families are worse off. They are worse off because of that carbon tax and so-called rebate. It's clear that these Liberals will not lift a finger to provide farmers and Canadians with relief from their cruel carbon tax. And if the Prime Minister won't commit to passing C-234 or a carbon tax election, what does he have to say to the families of, uh, of Autonomy South Monaghan who've doubled their use of the food banks in the last six months? But the Honourable Government House Leader. Mr. Speaker, I would respond to the Honourable Member that he just should advance a couple rows up here. I could introduce him if he'd like. Speak to the Opposition House Leader. Leader Bill C-234 is completely in their hands. Right. If they would like to bring it to the floor for a vote, we could deal with it. But while I'm on my feet, Mr. Speaker, and we're talking about doubling, C-59 is something he could also do about, do something about, which would bring the carbon rebate to double what it is today. Let's pass that today, have a positive impact for this constituents that he serves, and bring a better carbon rebate to rural Canada. Here, here. 
The Honourable Member from Battle River Crowfoot. On April 1st, that Prime Minister hiked the already crippling carbon tax by 23 per cent. Jake from Vermeer's Dairy near Camrose calculated that by 2030, he will be paying nearly 1500 bucks a month in additional carbon tax for the daily milk pickup alone. That is higher costs that consumers are forced to pay because of those Liberal policies. After eight years, that NDP Liberal Prime Minister is simply not worth the cost. So my question for those Liberals is this. Will they pass Bill C-234 in its unamended original form so that Canadians can afford to eat? The Honourable Minister for Natural Resources and Energy. It is important that people are not talking nonsense in the chamber. The parliamentary budget officer actually said that he was extremely troubled by the, the opposition's selective use of the facts and their spin. Now 300 Canadian economists from across the country have said the price on pollution is the best way to reduce carbon emissions in a manner that actually addresses affordability. It is a true shame in this House that we have a climate-denying opposition, one that doesn't care about affordability. It is truly a shame. The Honourable Member from Winnipeg Centre. Mr. Speaker, while grocery CEOs make record profits, students are having to turn to campus food banks to eat. When I spoke with Carleton University students, they told me food bank usage is on the rise, up 140 percent on campuses across the country. Students should be focused on studying for exams, not on starving. In this year's budget, will the Liberals finally put a stop to grocery CEO price gouging that's forcing students to turn to food banks? The Honourable Minister for Innovation. Mr. Speaker, I'd like to thank my colleague for her question, but it seems that she's been missing on some of the great announcements we've been doing for the last two weeks, Mr. Speaker, explaining Canadians how we're going to help them. Mr. Speaker, we just announced a national food school program, Mr. Speaker. This is going to be helping more than 400,000 kids in this country because we understand, Mr. Speaker, something that the Conservatives can never understand. They repeat the same thing for eight years. Confident nation invest in their people. Confident Confident nations invest in their kids. Confident nations invest in their workers, Mr. Speaker. On this side of the House, we know that every day is a good day to fight for Canadians. That's what we're going to be doing. The Honourable Member from Timmins, James Bay. For years, people in Attawapiskat have lived in mold-filled homes, sheds, and even tents on a tiny plot of land. This is because the Feds and Doug Ford refused to transfer land so they could build the homes they need. The Liberals would rather protect the land interests of the mining giant De Beer, a corporation that made $21 million from the sale of a single diamond in Attawapiskat. They're putting the interests of De Beers ahead of people who desperately need safe homes. When will the Liberals stop stalling and give the land back to the Cree of Attawapiskat. Good question. The Honourable Minister. Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker, and I thank the member opposite for his years of advocacy for the rights of Indigenous people, including for the people of Attawapiskat. As the member notes, uh, Attawapiskat is currently landlocked. Indeed, they're looking for more land to build those necessary houses to help the community grow. I've been communicating with the province of Ontario, who currently is the owner of the land, and we will continue to ensure that Ontario understands the urgency of this work. Good job. The Honourable Member from Kingston and the Islands. Mr. Speaker, Danielle from Alberta knows that she gets back more in the carbon, Canada carbon rebate than she pays through the federal back south on price and pollution. Premier Smith, I mean Danielle, actually did the math herself and came to the conclusion that, quote, I would say that I probably ended up better off with that transfer, end quote. Can the Minister of Environment and Climate Change please inform Danielle and other Canadians of what they should expect to see in their bank accounts today as a result of the Canada carbon rebate and how much this policy is helping Canadians with the cost of living while at the same time protecting the environment for generations to come. The Honourable Minister of the Environment and Climate Change. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I would like to thank Danielle for her testimony. With the next quarterly carbon rebate payments starting to arrive in Canadian bank accounts and mailboxes as of today, in Danielle's province of Alberta, a family of four will receive up to $450 
four times this year, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, over 300 economists, it was 200 last year, it's last week, it's now 300 from coast to coast agree that the evidence showed that not only does carbon pricing reduce pollution in Canada, but it does so at a, at a lower cost than any other approaches. Pricing pollution works, it can support Canadians and fight for climate change. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. The Honourable Member from Lethbridge. On April 1st, the Prime Minister hiked the carbon tax by 23 per cent. Every single week, I hear from dozens of constituents in my area who are telling me that they're struggling to be able to just to buy food, groceries, necessities. Food Bank in my area has more than doubled in recent months. After eight years of this NDP Liberal Prime Minister, he is just not worth the cost. That is clear to Canadians. So Conservatives have put forward a common sense solution. It's called Bill C-234. This government decided to gut it by bullying their senators. Will the Prime Minister choose to rescind and allow the bill to go forward in order to save Canadians a whole lot of money by scrapping the tax from farmers? The Honourable Minister for Employment and Workforce Mr. Development. Speaker, at the risk of putting holes into what they think is a good Tory story, let's look at some of the facts. 97% of farm liquids are exempt from price on pollution. Tyler McCann at committee, Mr. Speaker, indicated, and he is from the Canadian Agri-Food Policy Institute, indicated that there is no data to support carbon pricing and any increase on the price of food in Canada, full stop. Mr. Speaker, our Canada Carbon Rebate gives money back to more than 8 out of 10 Canadians. If they want the bill back, bring it back to the House. They can do it. I'll ask the Honourable Member from uh, Peace River Mackenzie, please, to uh, wait his turn. He's uh, an experienced, very experienced member of this House. The Honourable Member from Lethbridge. No matter what this government does to try to distract, the facts remain the same. Canadians are struggling. They cannot make ends meet. And of course, it starts with groceries and fuel at the pumps and being able to heat our homes. After eight years, this NDP Liberal Prime Minister just is not worth the cost, certainly not the cost of the punitive carbon tax. Conservatives put forward a very common sense bill, C234, which would axe the tax from farmers and save Canadians a whole lot of money. The Prime Minister and the Environment Minister put pressure on senators, bullying them into gutting this bill. Will the Prime Minister agree today to allow this bill to go forward in its unamended original form? The Honourable Government House Leader. The Honourable Member may have missed my earlier answer, but I could repeat it if she would like. The bill, C2, the bill in question, C-234, is a bill that the Conservatives could call any time and we could deal with and debate in this House. And I, while I'm on my feet, once again, I would like to add, and I perhaps want to correct something I said a little earlier to the other Honourable Member, this member could help a lot of Albertans out if she just get out of the way of the fall economic statement legislation, which doubles right. the top-up on the rural rebate, here, Mr. Here. Speaker, 20 per cent instead of 10 per cent. Make For the last time, I would like to uh, remind the very experienced members, including the member from Peace River Mackenzie, that uh, he should only take the floor when he's recognized by the Speaker. The Honourable Member for Bose. Mr. Speaker, for eight years, this Liberal bloc PM has not been worth the cost of the carbon tax. Farmers are rebelling against him. Mountains of red tape, a real lack of financial support, and a carbon tax which is stifling the farm sector throughout Canada. Getting rid of this carbon tax will be the quickest way of making food more affordable and helping our farmers keep working. But the Bloc Québécois wants to radically increase the tax. Will the Prime Minister commit to adopting C-234 in its original form without amendment in the budget tomorrow. The Honourable Minister of the Environment and Climate Change. Mr. Speaker, if the Conservatives had an ounce of intellectual integrity, they would admit to Canadians that 97% of fuel used on farms where there is pollution pricing is not taxed by the federal government, first of all. Secondly, do you know what I've been doing, Mr. Speaker? Recently, I've been meeting with farmers from Quebec, Alberta, Nova Scotia. I've been meeting with grain farmers, cattle farmers. They don't talk to me about carbon pricing. They talk to me about the hundreds of millions of dollars due to impacts from climate change in the farming sector in the country. Once again, 
I, it is a shame to have to remind very experienced members, like the member for Louis Saint-Laurent, that they have to wait their turn before speaking in this House. The Honorable Member for Beauce. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I would just like to ask my colleagues to come to Beauce next week, because there will be a farmer's protest. Young farmers who are dreaming of setting out in life are being smothered by increasing amounts of red tape, skyrocketing interest rates, and risk management programs that no longer meet needs. The Liberal Bloc Coalition is blocking Bill C-234 that shows that they are completely disconnected. I will ask my question again. Will the Prime Minister commit to passing C-234 in its original form without amendment in the budget tomorrow? The Honourable Minister of National Revenue. Mr. Speaker, it's a shame that my Quebec colleagues have not yet seemed to figure out that the pollution pricing system does not apply in Quebec. There has been a carbon market there since 2013, so there's no impact from the federal system. In the federal government, we're using incentives to push people to better practices, incentives to acquire greener equipment and so on. We will be there for all farmers, Mr. Speaker. The Honourable Member for Lac Saint-Jean. Mr. Speaker, instead of acting like the sorcerer's apprentice in Quebec jurisdiction in the budget, the federal government should help asylum seekers. These are people who don't even have a right to work. They've been waiting for two years for the federal government to give them a permit. They're waiting at food banks. They are ending up on the streets. They're being exploited in the black market. They're being trafficked and more. Will the minister finally convince his buddies to give them work permits? Would he do his job before instead interfering with other people's matters? The Honourable Minister. Mr. Speaker, we are accelerating granting permits to asylum seekers. I have a question for the member for Lac Saint-Jean. Does he agree with the leader of his party who wants to freeze immigration? Does he know what that means in rural ridings like La Saint-Jean? No more farming, no more fisheries, nothing, not even, not even wind energy. We need responsible people in power. We need accountable discussions about immigration levels. The Honourable Member for Lac Saint-Jean. I just told the member to keep his nose out of jurisdictions that don't belong to him. He's not listening. The federal government is now facing a humanitarian crisis. And it also needs to ensure that when people arrive, they're fairly spread out between provinces, because it's not OK that there are asylum seekers who are homeless in Quebec and Ontario who are not even able to get food at food banks, while meanwhile other provinces aren't doing anything. Will the government finally show enough humanity to share the load between provinces, many of which still have plenty of room to offer more services? The Honourable Minister of Immigration. Mr. Speaker, there's no sense to what my colleague is saying. Sometimes they want more federal interference, sometimes they don't. But he didn't answer my question. Does he stand with the leader of his party, the leader of the Black Québécois, who wants to irresponsibly freeze Quebec immigration? It's so irresponsible. He should talk to people in fisheries, he should talk to farmers. These are people in rural ridings who are struggling. We're not going to help them by freezing Quebec immigration. The Honourable Member from Kelowna Lake Country. Mr. Speaker, after eight years of this NDP Liberal Prime Minister, life has gotten worse for Canadians with higher taxes and higher mortgage payments. The Liberals' wasteful deficit spending left interest rates at 5%, hurting families with mortgages coming up for renewal. And banks are putting more money away for possible mortgage defaults. Now, this means people losing their homes. I ask the Honourable Member to start again. I'm going to ask all members, please, to uh, please take down your conversations to outside of the room. I'm going to ask all members to take their conversations outside the room. And let the member for Kelowna Lake Country ask her question. Oh. 
Mr. Speaker, after eight years of this NDP Liberal Prime Minister, life has gotten worse for Canadians with higher taxes and higher mortgage payments. The Liberals' wasteful deficit spending left interest rates at 5%, hurting families with mortgages coming up for renewal. The banks are putting more money away for possible mortgage defaults, and this means more people losing their homes. We're hearing of people no longer meeting mortgage stress tests, having to sell their home, forcing them to rent, paying rent more than their actual mortgage payments. Will the NDP Liberal Prime Prime Minister reverse his eight years of deficit spending and implement a one-for-one -one rule so that people can keep their homes. The Honourable President of the Treasury Board. Mr. Speaker, it would be more prudent for the members on the other side of the aisle to actually vote in favour of supports for Canadians if they truly cared about their well-being. They have voted against the Canada Child Benefit. They voted against dental care. They voted against $10 a day child care. They also did not focus on poverty when they were in power. We have brought poverty down to 7.4%, while under the Conservatives it was 14.5%. Mr. Speaker, on this side of the House, we will always support the most vulnerable in our country. The Honourable Member from Kelowna Lake Country. Well, Mr. Speaker, through eight years of NDP Liberal deficit spending, they cause the higher interest rates, which is causing people's mortgages to go up. Exactly. Families are slashing their budgets to just be able to afford their mortgages to hang on to their homes. And this year, Canada will spend $54 billion servicing Liberal debt. This is more money than the government sends to the provinces for health care. A dollar-for-dollar dollar rule would fix the budget and bring down interest rates. This NDP Liberal Prime Minister is just not worth the cost. Will the Prime Minister reverse eight years of deficit spending and implement a dollar-for-dollar dollar rule? Yeah. The Honourable President of the Treasury Board. Mr. Speaker, on this side of the House, we know how to ensure that we have a prudent fiscal situation as well as to support Canadians, especially in their time of need. We have the lowest debt-to-GDP ratio in the G7. We have historically low unemployment, Mr. Speaker, and we also have a AAA credit rating. Our upcoming budget will build on that work by putting forward new funding for housing, ensuring that we are there for children with a national school food program for 400,000 children, Mr. Speaker. We ask everybody in this House to vote with us. Thank you. The Honourable Member for Kamouraska, Kamouraska, Rivière-du-Loup. The Honourable Member for Kamouraska, Kamouraska, Rivière-du-Loup. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. After eight years of this Liberal government, home ownership is harder and harder. There's been an increase of 52 to 95.2 percent in mortgage rates in some parts of Quebec. It's increasingly difficult for young people to get a mortgage. This Prime Minister is much too expensive. He's just not worth the cost of mortgage payments. Will he listen to the millions of Canadians who are struggling? Will he put an end to his inflationary policies once and for all? The Honourable Minister of Public Services and Procurement. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. One, two, three, four, five, six. That's the number of affordable housing units that were built by the current leader of the opposition when he was Minister of Housing. Listen to my colleague's question. When I look at the projects in his writing, well, 41 units of affordable housing were built in his writing just over the last few weeks, thanks to the municipality that the leader of the opposition called incompetent, by the way. So the leader of the opposition only managed to build six throughout his entire time throughout the country. Which of the two systems is more incompetent? Let me ask you that. The Honourable Member for Sudbury. Mr. Speaker, the federal carbon pricing system was designed to keep life affordable for families by putting money back to their pockets. The next quarterly payments will be sent to Canadians' bank accounts and mailboxes starting on April 15th. Can the President of the Treasury Board tell this House how these rebates will reduce emissions and make life more affordable for families throughout the country? The Honourable President of the Treasury Board. Mr. Speaker, when Conservatives deny climate change, they are also denying science. 
with our carbon pricing system, we are making big polluters pay and giving more money back to Canadian families. Eight out of ten Canadian families, including in my riding of Oakville, will have more money in their pocket. On this side of the House, we will continue to make our economy greener. The environment and the economy go hand in hand. Unlike the Conservatives, we believe in science. The Honourable Member from Calgary, Midnapore. Mr. Speaker, the Procurement Ombudsman confirmed what we already respected, and that is Dominic Barton and McKinsey and & Company receive preferential treatment in contracting. The I'm Liberal the NDP government has given over $100 million in contracts to McKinsey & Company. This Prime Minister is not worth the cost of consulting. So why is it that Liberals take care of themselves, friends and insiders, when they should be taking care of Canadians? Here, here, here. The Honourable Member, the Honourable Minister of Pub, uh, Public Works. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. And taking care of Canadians is exactly what we need to do on this side of the House, certainly, through proper management of procurement exercises with the type of things and measures that we have announced in the last few weeks and months, but also looking after the needs of Canadians with the important investment in housing that we have made, and we're maybe making even more with the announcements come tomorrow, 8,000 homes, affordable homes just in the province of Quebec, wow. and hundreds of thousands of them across wow. Canada. Here. Yeah, the Honourable Member from Calgary, Midnapore. Mr. Speaker, a Liberal minister personally signed a contract for McKinsey & Company for $5.7 million. No wonder they didn't want to give us the documents. They were trying to protect their That's ministers. Right. Department officials were trying to push back. They said, don't sign that document, minister. The, the minister went ahead and personally signed the document. Right. Why is it that Liberals take care of themselves when they should be taking out the trash and taking care of Canadians? Yeah. Yeah. The Honourable Minister for Public Services and Procurement. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I already answered this question in English. I will answer the same way in French. We are taking care of Canadians while also ensuring that our procurement system is fair and transparent. Thanks to the new rules that we've created over the last few months, among other things. But taking care of Canadians also means recognizing the housing crisis that they're experiencing. And that's why over the last few days we announced several new measures that will also be announced tomorrow in the budget. Member from Sherwood Park, Fort Saskatchewan. This NDP Liberal Prime Minister is not worth the cost of a less stable world. Six years ago, Parliament voted for my motion to recognize that the regime in Iran's IRGC is a terrorist organization and to shut down their operations in Canada. Uh, but in six years, this NDP Liberal government has failed to act. Liberals even blocked my common sense Bill C-350 to shut down the IRGC. So with the IRGC spreading terror across the Middle East and around the world, why did this Prime Minister choose to allow the IRGC to continue to recruit, fundraise, and promote its ideology here in Canada. The Honourable Minister for Public Safety. Mr. Speaker, we've said many times in this House, my colleague, the Minister of Foreign Affairs, has repeated it. Iran uh, is a state sponsor of terrorism. Mm -hmm. We have taken a series of severe measures to restrict members of the regime, including the Revolutionary Guard Corps from coming to Canada. With respect to listing a terrorist entity, it's national security uh, agencies that do these reviews and from time to time provide advice to the government. Obviously, Mr. Speaker, all options are on the table, and I've asked the national security community to provide the government quickly with that advice. The Honourable Member from St. John's East. Price on carbon pollution is one of the simplest and most effective ways to reduce pollution that is causing climate change. Just as importantly, the federal carbon pricing system is designed to keep life affordable by putting money back into families' pockets. Can the Minister of Rural Economic Development share with Canadians how much they will get back in payments starting today, April 15th? The Honourable Minister for Rural Economic Development. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Today, the next Canada rebate check starts coming in people's bank accounts and in their mailboxes. And families and the members riding in St. John's are going to receive up to $298. And those everywhere else in Newfoundland and Labrador, Mr. Speaker, are going to get $327 on their April quarterly deposit. However, unfortunately, the Conservatives are showing once again they really don't care about rural Canadians. They're holding up the doubling of the rural top, but Mr. Speaker, keeping those rebates 
from being even bigger. We know the price on pollution works, and we know we are putting money back in Canadians' pockets. I just wish the Conservatives did. The Honourable Member from Nunavut. The school that I graduated from, the Atagotaluk Elementary School in Iglulik, is falling apart under the Liberals' watch. A recent report said there are 127 issues that need fixing, including safety hazards like missing handrails and exposed electrical circuits. Children cannot learn when their school is crumbling. In Budget 2024, will the Liberals invest in fixing or replacing schools so Nunavut children can learn safely. The Honourable Parliamentary Secretary. Thank you, uh, Mr. Speaker, and I want to thank my colleague for her question. We agree that every child in Canada should have the opportunity to go to school in a proper environment and also to go to school on a full belly. That's why we've implemented programs to support schools, support students, and to support the school uh, food program, which we think is very important for kids all across Canada, including those in the Arctic and in Nunavut. Here, here. Good job. The Honourable Member from Spadina, Fort York. Mr. Speaker, the Islamic regime in Iran, the official supplier of rockets to Hamas, has now fired its own weapons at Israel. Is the NDP Liberal Coalition still considering stopping arms exports to Israel and limiting that country's defence capacity? Has the launching of over 200 drones and cruise missiles been enough to silence the government's NDP masters? It must be difficult being a partner with a partner that is so deaf, blind and quiet on Iran and Hamas's crimes. Mr. Speaker, has the Prime Minister at least learned something and will not be repeating his 2015 promise to normalize relations with Iran in the upcoming election? The Honourable Minister for Foreign Affairs. Speaker, Canada unequivocally condemns the attacks by Iran against Israel. This was unprecedented. We support Israel and its people. This attack only served to destabilize the region and further escalate in the region, and this is completely unacceptable. That is why I've been in contact with my Israeli counterpart, and also I've been in contact with many actors in the region, and we will continue to push proactively to make sure that, indeed, there is no further escalation and that we bring back peace to the region. Thank you so much. Et voici la fin de la période des questions. That concludes question period.